Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy Crazy and I am here to tell you about a very very cool faction in Gwent. This faction is one of the factions that my cousin Trophy Nut really really doesn't like so he asked me personally to make you this deck guide on this very very cool faction. Today we will be stealing everything from our opponent with this very very fun faction in a deck i like to call all mine that's it oh oh hi trophy nut yes. what are you doing i'm just are you I'm, making a nilfgaard video i'm not doing anything no no get out i'm sorry cousin i sorry. told you i don't sorry. want you in here why are you we're not we're not oh crap Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge. Today, as my cousin already explained, my cousin who's definitely not me, um, we're going into Nilfgaard. So let's take a look at the All Mind deck. Sorry. God damn you. So all jokes aside, I tried to make a deck that is not reliant on Masquerade Ball, since uh, Masquerade Ball is going to get a very, very significant nerf um, next week, because next week we're going into the next patch, the next season, and uh, yeah, this card will no longer be that relevant. It's just, it will still be very strong. The only difference that they actually made is that the progress on the scenario is only triggered when you play an aristocrat on your side of the field. So spying units such as uh, Roderick or uh, Joachim will no longer trigger Masquerade Balls. So two of the strongest, well, the quickest ways of triggering the um, scenario will no longer trigger it. But we do get a few interesting leader ability changes in return and a few card changes as well. So I'm really, really looking forward to that, to actually making a sort of uh, derivative of what this deck is going to be. But this deck, I admit, is sort of a little bit of a meme deck, but it's still pretty viable on pro rank. So what we're doing here is using the Enslave ability. So we're taking a unit of five power or less, because we have eight tactic cards in our deck, from our opponent and putting that on our side of the field. So what this deck is mostly about is there's a few soldiers in there, but most of the archetype of this deck is going to be spying, tactics, and stealing your opponent's units. So Still a little bit of Assimilate because you know I really like Assimilate in Nilfgaard and nothing else. But this is not going to be that. This, uh, yeah, we're mostly going to be stealing our opponent's units. So if you know what all these cards do, you can all quickly scroll through the deck list. Then you can skip this part of the video. We're going to go through every single card one by one. And you can go straight into the example matches. But for those who like a bit more of a deeper explanation of how this deck actually functions before we do that, you can stick around um, and otherwise you can use the timeline to skip ahead. Again, as always, this deck list is also on the Play Gwent website. The link is in the description down below and upvotes are always appreciated because that gives me a bit more exposure on these deck guides and gives me a bit more of a boost to continue doing this because I really, really like doing this. For all those of you that are still here, let's start from the bottom. So the first, okay, I think I removed the card. So the first card is the Mage Infiltrator, a spying unit to start with. So one power, you put that on your opponent's side of the field and when she is hit on the field, well, not hit, on the field when she lands on the field she damages her adjacent units by three so you can put that in between like an andrega larva pair or something like that or plenty of the uh the swarming archetype these days and just take out two of them in one go which is very very handy in today's meta <laughs> then we have the nausicaa sergeants as i said but there's a few soldiers in here so the nausicaa sergeants four power is a soldier and whenever you play a unit with the deploy ability you boost yourself by one which triggers multiple times on certain cards we'll be talking about those in a minute then we have battle preparation since we have a few soldiers this also makes sense you boost an allied unit by four and give it to armor but if it's a soldier you boost that unit by six and give it to armor instead it is a tactic so it does count towards our enslaved total that we needed now we have a double tourney joust it's a very very versatile tactic that either allows you to remove an enemy unit unit's shield and damage it by four or give an allied unit a shield and boost it by four so you can either take out like a griffin witcher adept or a um, hefty helge which uh, of course we also have in this deck next up of course the duchess informant is also a spying unit when you play that on your side her on the your uh, opponent's side of the field you spawn and play a base copy of a non-disloyal enemy unit a bronze enemy unit of course so you can copy your opponent's unit something that will come in handy later on as well especially with cards like artorius and bronze 
Now we have the other soldier in this deck, the Impera Enforcer. So starts at 4 power, has zeal, and its order ability allows you to damage an enemy unit by 1. So you get 5 points when you play him, but whenever an enemy unit gains spying, you gain an extra charge, which is very, very cool indeed. Then Assassination, you damage a unit by 6, but decrease the damage by 1 for each unit adjacent to it. Needs to be units, so you can actually target some pretty high-powered units with this, and it also counts as a tactic, and there's two of those in the deck. Then we have two Amnesties, so this is probably the crux of this deck, kind of like the team of this deck, we're going to try and steal our opponent's units, so this is exactly what that does. You seize an enemy unit with 3 power or less, giving you technically 6 points, you remove 3 from your opponent and you gain 3 yourself, but since we have a Devotion deck, you also boost it by 2. Normally this would only trigger when you do this on a Spying unit, but now we always trigger that ability regardless, so that's 8 points if you manage to take a 3 power unit. And of course you can use the uh, Impera Enforces to just whittle down a stronger unit to 3 power. Hopefully an engine unit that you can even get more uh, points out of and just start generating more points. It just works like that. Then we have Roderick of Duntine, this uh, sneaky bastard. It's also a spying unit but with 2 power. But on deploy you look at 2 random gold cards from your deck, can does not need to be units, and then play one of them. So. Take a look at your deck before you do this so you know what you could get and if your, uh, of course, units are low enough, the gold cards that are still in your deck is low enough so you kind of know what you're going to get. Then we have Cantarella. Cantarella has seen a lot more play. I usually include this card just because it's a lot of fun and it's a really cool, just funny interaction if you grab something, uh, well something by accident but uh, we're gonna be using this properly this time so Cantarella also a spying unit you play the top card from your opponent's deck that's gonna come in handy with the um, location card that we also included in this deck we're gonna see that in a minute then Fergus Far Emery's uh, on deploy you give three enemy units spying which you can choose and of course it also triggers the enforcer so if you have two of those you actually gain six charges on those two units in one go because of the three spying that you've added very strong card in combination with the enforcers without the enforcers it does barely anything so keep that in mind it could be strong but it doesn't always be strong so you need to have a protected enforcer that was no proper english but that's probably my cousin's influence there and then of course we have Artorius Vigo, an assimilate unit, so it triggers, uh, well boosts itself by one every time you play a unit that was not in your starting deck. Starts at 2 power, but on deploy you create and play a 1 power copy of a bronze unit from your starting deck. You are guaranteed to get one of the spying units, so either the Duchess Informant or the Mage. And then it could be that you have both, but otherwise you have the Nozgul Sergeant or the Enforcer. So still good options if you want to play this, especially the Enforcer can uh, give you some extra points if you uh, get those sticks going. But of course, because you play a uh, copy of a bronze unit from your starting deck, you also trigger the assimilate, so Arturius is always going to be 3 at the start. And then of course, Hefty Helge, 4 power starts with a shield and on order you damage a unit by 2. You have 1 charge, but every time you play a tactic, of which we have 8 in this deck, technically 9 because we have the echo card as well, you gain another charge, you can damage a unit by 2 again. So very, very powerful if you can keep it alive. Then the location card, so Gorder Gavade has resilience and when you play it you spawn either a Viper Witcher Adept, a Viper Witcher, Viper Witcher Mentor or an Alchemist on your side of the board. Um, I'll quickly go over all of these because most of them are pretty interesting. So Viper Witcher allows you to bleed an enemy unit for two turns. And if you have Adrenaline 6, you spawn a base copy of that unit on top of the opponent's deck. So that way you can force, uh, forcefully see what your opponents will have at the top of their deck. So you can play Cantarella. That's one way to do it. Viper Witcher Mentor is also very strong, but you need to wait for the Adrenaline 2 ability. Uh, so you can only have uh, two more cards in your hand which will set the power of this card to match the provision cost of the highest cost card in your opponent's deck that is left. That could be very strong, especially if there's still a scenario card or something like Oneromancy in their deck, uh, and your opponent can't really counter that. Then the Alchemist is probably the, the most bullshit card in this uh, batch. You look at the top three cards of your deck and put one on top, so you know again what your opponent's top card will be, and then you swap the top card of your opponent's deck with yours. So... Um, 
you kind of put one of your cards on top of their deck and then you steal another card from your opponent at the same time. Uh, and then the adapt just boosts itself by one every turn uh, if you have uh, if your opponent has more cards in their deck than you. Usually you want to go for the mentor. I don't like playing the alchemist, but this card also has an order ability, which again functions uh, well, works really well with Cantarella because it allows you to move a card from your opponent's graveyard to the top of their deck, technically allowing you to play Joachim four times in this deck. So you've seen that in the pro tournaments as well. You play Joachim, you use Coup de Grasse to play Joachim again, and then in the next turn you play Gordon Gevate, put the dead Joachim back on top of your opponent's deck, play that one with Cantarella, and then um, use Coup de Grasse again, and you have four Joachims. Then of course Coup de Grasse, we just talked about that, another tactic, Echo cards, you can play that twice. Damage an enemy unit by three, and if you kill it, you spawn and play a base copy of it. Uh, if you do that on a spine unit, you do that regardless of killing it or not. So on Joachim it will always work unless he loses his spying uh, tag there, which is also definitely an option. But with the amount of damage you can do in this deck, you definitely have targets for this ability. Now you have his invocation, another way to, uh, well, not another way to do something uh, with Cantarella, but another way to do something with Joachim. So Yennefer's invocation, you can use uh, choose an enemy unit on the board and place that on top of your deck. You know that's on top of your deck, so Joachim will definitely pull that card if you play him after this card. Um, otherwise, this is just stall removal, you just remove one of their cards from play. Then Bratens, another assimilate unit that does something similar to Artorius, but you are guaranteed to play a disloyal unit from your starting deck, and he starts at 4 power. So with assimilate, he's going to go to 5 at least, and possibly 6 if you play a Duchess Informant, because uh, you then play another copy from your opponent and you trigger assimilate again. So very strong engine card that provides you with a lot of tempo if played correctly. Then Ramon Tirconel is also in this deck because we have plenty of soldiers, so 4 power, 2 armor and on deploy you spawn and play a base copy of a bronze soldier from your hand, triggering assimilate again on all your assimilate units uh, and give it 2 armor. The 2 armor is also very important because that protects your um, enforcers a bit more because this you want to try and put on an enforcer. Um, so technically you could have up to four enforcers on the field um, with uh, Artorius as well. But then of course the one from Ar Artorius will only be one power. Then Joachim, we talked about him quite a bit already. Four power for a spying unit is a lot, but you get a very powerful ability in return because you play the top non-spying unit from your deck and boost it by eight. So for example, if you pull a Nausicaa Sergeant, you will boost him to 12 in one go. Um, do keep in mind that you still need to have non-spying units in this deck. So keep an eye on your deck so you know what to pull with Joachim. Because uh, this deck is set up like this um, with a very limited amount of units. So by the end of the, the, the match you will almost certainly know what you're going to pull with Joachim. Which is good, but also a deficit if you don't have any units in your deck anymore. So keep an eye on that. This could very well break. And then of course the evolution card, the Usurper. Um, if you play him full, this is a devotion deck, you get Veil, you get on deploy, you spawn an operative on each enemy row, an operative is 3 power, and then you can grab those back with uh, the order ability. So giving you 12 points as a base, but he also boosts himself by 1 for every agent you play. Um, all the spying units are agents, so that would work out uh, incredibly well. The bronze ones, not the gold ones sadly. And now we have Crystal Skull as our stratagem just to give uh, probably one of those enforcers a uh, very nice protection with Veil and four extra points. So then our leader ability is another stealing ability. You seize an enemy unit with three power or less, but for every four tactics in your deck, you uh, actually boost that value by one. So we have eight tactics in this deck, so your seize ability allows you to grab a power five unit or lower. Um, and that's it. So that's why this deck is called All Mine. Because with Coup de Grasse, um, then the Amnesties and your ability, your Enslave ability, you have a lot of options to start stealing units. So uh, let's try and do just that in a few example matches. So, Double Cross versus Enslave. There is but one punishment for okay, fair days. enough, I suppose. <laughs> oh, this is gonna suck big time. Um, let's see. We do have all the, the good cards. I don't think we'll have much use for the Mage Infiltrator. Uh, so I'm just gonna get rid of a few assassinations. We do get Hefty Helch this time. Uh, Amnesty is fine. 
I'm gonna keep the assassination as well. Um, should get rid of the usurper for now because I don't really have a use for him now. And we get the Almond, which is also worthless because we don't have a soldier in hand. Okay, um, <laughs> I had to wait for my opponent to get the connection back. Um, hmm. So really gold-filled hand. I'll start with Hefty Helge, even though there's probably ways for them to take it out. Uh, and that's Crystal Skull at in one go. That's eight points, a shield and veil. And now it's probably going to get taken out by Yennefer's Invocation or something like that. I don't have Cantarella to pull it back, actually. Damn it. And yeah. Yep. Yep. That's exactly how that was going to work. Great. So I have no idea what to do now. Um... Yeah, there's actually not a single card in my hand that is actually worth playing right now. Because it either needs targets, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna play Artorius and he's gonna give us at least one of these, uh, yeah, one of these guys. There we go, that's four points at least. That was not good to start with, damn, I should have looked at my hand better. I mean, I was really unlucky with the redraws as well, because we got Ramon, which is useless at the moment. Uh, and since we're on blue coin, we don't have any targets for anything else, so the, the damage dealers and everything. And we get Traheron, so top three cards, and then he removes one, and he removes the battle preparation. Okay, that's that's actually... That's actually A-OK, -okay. I'm fine with that. Seizing... I mean, I could, it's not gonna do much, but at least it's something. There we go. Let's just grab that card. It's still eight points, which is not nothing. Um, and I can actually, I can actually click the Aritan snow, snow, Snowman over here. Just oh, yep, there we go, Kingslayer. That's gonna be really annoying. That's gonna be really annoying. There goes another Tourney Joust. As long as it's stuff like that, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Let's you know turn that around a little bit because um, I know Hefty Helch is up top. So I want to get rid of that because I don't have a way of pulling it myself. So let's just put Bratens down. Um, put the Duchess Informant down and then just grab that Kingsley and discard that Hefty Helch. I don't want to see that in their deck. There we go. And uh, let's finish what we started and just kill Aiden over here. There, there we go. Boss fight done. And then we get Cantarella. Do they know what's on top of our deck? I don't think they do. Nope, they don't. They get a Mage Infiltrator for their troubles. No worries, man. Fair enough, I guess. Um, I could start... I think I might actually start training my own deck here. The only problem if it's gonna be if I get the Usurper Officer, which is a 1 in... Yeah, that's a 20% chance that I grab that guy. I'm gonna hope... I'm gonna roll the dice. 20% should not be an option. 20% should definitely not be an option. There we go, that's better. That's better. Uh, and let's already just... Use that one tick over there. There we go. Okay. There's no Yennefer's Invocation anymore. Unless they double cross and use the one in my hand. Which definitely shouldn't be an option. They could have crossed Cantarella. Of course. Could I actually have killed that? No, it's an enemy unit. Would have liked it if the Enforcers could... Oh, Cantarella into Cantarella. Great. <laughs> And they get Amnesty. Okay. And Amnesty is not going to be that good of a card. They can grab... Uh, yeah, the Nozka Sergeant or Artorius. That's not going to be... And we do get another Spying Tick there. But we're 22 points ahead. So I'm going to leave it at that. Because uh, I don't think they'll be able to surpass me here. They try to thin out my deck as much as possible. But as long as I... Okay, and we get, of course, Vilger Forts, but that's not gonna kill... That's not gonna be enough, because that's gonna pull yet another Nolska Sergeant out. And then the Hunting Pack is gonna be 8, but it's on the deploy, so it's gonna be 9. Okay. Okay. So what we need to be careful about, I'm assuming they have Golgrim at the very end. Um, Fergus is... There. My, my hand is not good right now. I need that Enforcer. If I don't get the Enforcer or an Oscar Sergeant, I do have another Enforcer, right? Wait, wait. <laughs> I guards. Do I have another Enforcer, right? Yeah, I do have another Enforcer. So I ideally would like to have either the, ooh, the Enforcer or the Usurper. The Usurper, okay. It's better than nothing, I suppose. 
Uh, as long as I don't thin my deck further, but they're going to, right? The bastards. The bastards. The bastards. Matahuri. Okay, so that is that gonna give me 30 joust again? Yeah, it's gonna give me 30 joust again. I mean, I could just grab Matahuri. Just to have another good card in my hand. Next time. They shouldn't be able to grab Cantarella again. And this way they also don't have Yennefer's Invocation if they do double cross. So yeah, let's do that. Or do I use that on a Usurper in a minute? I don't know if they have Usurper even. No, I'm gonna hold off on that. Um, let's just put Ramon, although Ramon could be good for later. I still have a lot of spying units for later. Um, let's just assassinate it. Let's just assassinate it and be done with it. We still, we're still at eight cards. So we still have the advantage. It's zero, zero. Nothing there. If they play another Kingslayer, Stregobor. I'm definitely... Hmm. Well, I should have killed Stregobor instead of doing what I just did. I mean, I could Yennefer invocate that so it doesn't happen. Um, so let's just do that then. Yeah, let's Yennefer invocate that. I know Golgim is gonna be next and I'm gonna be boned, but I don't care. And then we get Joachim, which is pulling cards from their own deck. And that's the Artfane Tortoise. That is not that bad. I don't have Cantarella anymore, so the location card is gonna be pretty useless. Do I use Ramon? I would have you preferred to have the Enforcer for Ramon, but that doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. Uh, so yeah, let's before we, we break our hand completely, let's put Ramon with the uh, Nazca Sergeant there. Didn't realize, but Coup de Grasse is also still still in my in my deck. Ah, oh, that is really annoying. I should probably play the Usurper now, so they don't grab him with the double cross ability. What is it you want? And they do damage an enemy by two. That's gonna just be Rildrick again. So they're thinning their own deck now. Don't know why, but they are. Push on! No, and that's Tibor, yeah, okay. Oh no, and that's gonna pull out Stegobor. Oh god, that's gonna pull out Stegobor. So yeah, Stregobor is back. And I sadly can't lock my own units. This is a bitch. Let's play the other Nozga Sergeant and keep this going slowly, um, even though, of course, the Usurper really needs to leave my hand in a minute. Because if I get double-crossed on the Usurper again, man, that, that that person's connection isn't really good. If I get double-crossed on the Usurper, that's another 12 points for them. On a double-cross ability, so that was really nice. Good a grass on Joachim, probably. So that's another really big card. Another... Uh, well, eight extra points, which is only six extra points. No, seven extra points. And there's the lock. Will you lock my unit, or are you just gonna lock uh, uh, lock Stregobor? No, no, lock lock this guy. That's gonna be way better than what you're doing. Can I lock any? <gasps> yes. Thank you. Thank you. You can you can go screw yourself. <laughs> Oh, okay, that was nice. That was nice. Yes, and they, they forfeited for that. That was really good. I could, I could crap. Oh, their connection was not lost. Fuck you, they just forfeited because Trigger Boy was gone. Okay, uh, that ended a, a lot better than I thought it was going to be, but uh, let's do another one. Oh, that last match was absurd. And we're doing it again. Double cross again. Okay, it's going to be an all Nilfgaard meme episode. I don't... I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad about that. It's just, it's really fun to see those interactions sometimes. Um, we basically have a similar hand. I should probably keep the battle preparation now. I do have hefty health, so that's a combination of, hmm. Let's get rid of the Nazca Sergeant. Uh, and get rid of the Mage Infiltrator. 
Ooh, and we get Joachim already. Do we get rid of Tourney Joust? But Tourney Joust is also a good buff for the Imperia Enforcers if we need to. So let's just get rid of Battle Preparation. Then we get Cantarella. Okay. Okay, we do have Cantarella. So if we get Yennefer's Invocated this time on the same starting position. So we do Hefty Helge and then Crystal Skull. Then we can actually pull Hefty Helge back if we want to. Because we have Cantarella. Ah, oh, this is so weird. This is going to be a fun match. This is going to be a fun match. So even if I lose this one, all oh, they purify them. That is... That's not nice, is it? I have a bit of a counter for that, but it's really dangerous to do now. And I'm guessing they have a lock ready. Oh, do I put down Imperian Forces instead? I should... Yes, yes, I'm going to do that. So Imperia Enforcers up next. So I can hit that purified unit over, well, the, the Imperial Diviner. Because if they now want to lock the Hefty Helch, I can actually use the Duchess Informant to grab the Imperial Diviner and purify my own Hefty Helch again. So we get poisoned even. Interesting. So that's going to be even better. So now we just use the Duchess Informant. Grab that Imperial Divider, which is also an Assimilate unit, and just purify Hefty Helch with that. And then we can... Yeah, I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that Imperial Divine in there. That's a nice target to just use for more purification. And then we got Duchess Informant ourselves. All of course the Imperial Enforces. And those get hit once. I could use... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use Turny Jazz to take out that um, Imperial Enforcer. And that gives us another double charge. Well, another charge on Hefty Helge. Which is fine for now. I'll just keep that charge there. Just in case I want to grab something with Coup de Grasse that has a higher base power. Um, right now it's just about the bronzes that I want to spend. So not let's not just overspend right now. Even with Fergus... I'm hoping I just get another um, another Imperial Enforcer to work with Ramon next. Uh, so there's a few things I could do now. I could try um, Poison, but I think I'm just going to use the random Cantarella now. Because um, it is a spine. Yeah, you know what? Let's just do that. Let's just do Cantarella. Completely wildly. Okay. <laughs> Uh, at least it, it borked something on their end. Um, let's just do Duchess Informant then. That was, yeah, that was really, really interesting. Um, let's just hit something else with the uh, Enforcers there. Well, the, the, the Vincent from Mordeham is gone now. So that, that's just completely lucky. Ah, uh, Cantayala is fun. And we get another pass. I am actually gonna, just for fun, because I know Cantayala is still there. I'm going to actually coup de grace deck Cantarella and play another card from their deck. Just to be able to... Oh, and there we go. Another Cantarella from their deck. And then we get... Oh yeah, that's just going to be a tactic. Um, huh. I could grab the Imperial and forces that I killed before. So that is absolutely fine. I thinned their deck out a little bit. I took their Cantarella and their Vincent from Orleham. So that's pretty good. Pretty good. I don't need to use the charges. <laughs> Because that was another nine points of damage that was on there. Funny. Grabbing Cantarella with Cantarella is always really, really funny. Okay. Let's just focus on the next round then. Because I'm going to pass this one anyway. So let's get rid of the Mage Infiltrator. Artorius is always good. Assassination... Hmm. Assassination might be a bit too much. Let's get rid of... Yeah, let's just, let's get rid of Assassination. We get another Nozgul Sergeant. Okay. Not the best hand, because I still have a lot of good cards in here. Like Usurper and Bratens. Um, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's pause. And our opponent does Roderick. So that gets rid of another gold card from their deck. That seems like a weird tactic to do. Because that's another gold card that they don't have access to right now. And because of the fact that Roderick is now also gone, that's weird. But okay, fair enough, they won the round. Barely. Because of course Roderick gives us two points as well. Oh, can we get another Enforcer? Well, we need another Enforcer and Ramon, so that's not going to work probably. Um, do we have any benefits of getting spying units on the field? Doesn't seem like it, does it? 
We get the Usurper, which is good. I think I'm gonna get rid of one of the Nozga Sergeants. Although, I think Fergus... Fergus is only 7 points. Nozga Sergeants might actually be more. Yeah, there we go. Opponent is deciding something. They barely have a, a hand anymore. And they start with Gordogavate. They could still get a good card from us. And they get an Alchemist first. Of course. And we get Mano. And they get Amnesty. Oh wait, we do get we do get Mano now. Mano is our top card. Mano is our top card. That's actually really good. Because Mano can allow us to grab another tactic from our deck. And I think we still have. We still have assassination, we still have battle preparation. We don't necessarily need to kill that alchemist, but if we do Joachim, now we're guaranteed to get Mano. Mano is going to grab... Um, could grab assassination, because battle preparation is going to make that, that Mano really big, so let's just grab assassination and kill that alchemist over there. Okay. So that was guaranteed. And we got rid of our Joachim out of our hand. Because of course we still need to keep in mind that that's gonna be... That is definitely double cross. So we need to get rid of the better cards rather quickly. So Artorius is most likely gonna be next and then the Usurper. So then we get Bratens. Bratens is actually also interesting. Because Bratens is gonna go... To a lot. Okay, never mind. They boosted him to 12 now. So I can't grab him. I do still have Yennefer's Invocation in deck, but that's not going to help me because I don't have any cards that pull cards from my deck. So I think the, the way I said I was going to do it is probably fine. So let's just do Artorius first. Artorius gives us... I think I made a mistake here. Yeah, there's no, there's no cards to pull. So uh, I don't have Mage Infiltrator power either, so that's just going to be Nozgul Sergeant. Damn it. Didn't think that through. Okay, fair enough. Let's do it like that. And then the Usurper after that. Although I could put down all the Nozgul Sergeants because I have a lot of Nozgul Sergeants now. Uh, just to get a little bit of points. And then we get a Mir. Ooh. Then we get a Mir. Oh, that is good. Because if I now turn a Joust... Yeah, let's turn a Joust in Mir. I don't know if they're going to get another... Em if they have another Emissary, I'm toast, basically. Because Emissary boosts... It. No, no, even with Emissary, I can still pull this out. That's going to be pretty good. So, either I now coup de grasse it. Yeah, I'm going to coup de grasse it. I'm going to definitely coup de grasse it, because Emir actually gives me another... Um, so there we go. Let's coup de grasse Emir. Um, Emir gives us another card that we pull from our deck, and it is Roderick, so that's really good. Let's get rid of one of the Nolska Sergeants now. And that's Emir. Um, and I think I'm going to seize... I'm going to enslave that seditious aristocrat. Because that's going to boost every time we... Because we, we basically stole their, their tactic now. They're going to be playing a lot of spying units now. And every unit they play will also be a spying unit. So we're going to get the benefit out of that. And remember, we still pull another card from... The deck in a minute. With Joachim. Oh no, we can't. We, we just use Coup de Grasse. That's, that's not going to work. Um, so that's Triple Spying, but they also gain Spying. I'm going to do Roderick. Yeah, Roderick is going to be good regardless. So let's just do Roderick. And Roderick, we get Bratens or Ramon. I think, yeah, Bratens is going to be better. Um, Bratens over here, and then we... But, yeah, again, we don't have good choices for the Duchess Informant here. Uh, so we just put the Infiltrator over uh, here. And that's another spying unit, so boosting our uh, Seditious Aristocrats again. And we got multiple one-power spying units on the board now. Um, next up is going to be the Usurper. And of course, we still have time provisions, so I want to avoid them getting the uh, the location card here. So they could across. I'm assuming you walk him. Oh, they could across Emir, of course. Now, 
Um, I can work with that. I can definitely work with that. Oh, and they get usurped out of the double crawls. That was lucky. That was really lucky. Okay. Okay. Um, I can assassinate. Although the double emir is not going to help anybody, is it? Because um, Usurper can get the spying unit, uh, the spying uh, tag. But it is a deployability. Yeah, I'm going to put another Nozga Sergeant down. Like that. And we grab another one power spying unit. Just keeping us up top. But we spend a lot of our good cards here. They did lose Cantarella, so I don't think the location card is going to be useful for them. Well, not any more useful than it's going to be for us. Ooh, and we get Yennefer's Invocate on what was that? I missed what that was. That was a me, right? Yeah. Um, so let's assassinate Dadamir. Yeah, let's assassinate Dadamir. And then we're going to seize it with Amnesty again. Ooh, that is really good. That is really good. So they got... They got Joachim again. Okay, so that's gonna... Um, yeah, so everything we play is gonna be a spying unit regardless. Not that that matters too much anymore. Um, but now we can actually grab... That other Amir again. It's gonna be 8 points. We're gonna be down a card, but there we go. At least everything they play will still be spying units now. We get two more spying units in a minute. And I probably should have played the location card because Amir is 11 provisions. Forgot about that as well. And that's just going to be four, so that's not going to be enough. Yeah, let's just play Gorda Gavade now. And use the Viper Witcher Mentor. I don't know how much that's going to be. Ooh, only six. Only 6, but we still have... That is going to be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 points in one go. So yeah, I think we won. Whew. That was a really cool mirror match. Well, not entirely mirror match, because we even get one for that. But then the Usurper is going to... Go, go, please go. So there we go, Usurper. So that's... 60, 69. Wow, that was really cool. All right. But that proves that this deck actually works. The stealing allows you to definitely in mirror matchups gain more control than your opponent can. Because that Emir was all over the place. <laughs> I think at the end there were like four Emirs uh, in total. Just because of the way that the seizing and the coup de grasses work constantly. But that was really cool. Alright. So a very, very Nilfgaard heavy episode. Which is actually very fitting. Uh, <laughs> for the one time that I play Nilfgaard and it's not Assimilate. We just face two double crosses. Um, absolutely fine with that. It was a, a lot of fun. And I hope you guys have as much fun with this deck as well. Because it is a bit different than what you're used to. It does focus a lot more on tactics. And uh, spying units and then seizing everything that your opponent has to play. But as you saw, that can be very beneficial in mirror matchup matchups so uh the deck guide again is also available on the play grant website give me an upvote there if you liked it and with that said we've arrived at the end of the episode because that was it for the all mind deck guide uh hope you guys enjoyed this uh one time that i'm gonna ever be playing nilfgaard in its proper way no that's that's not true but my cousin my cousin was very very nice of him to just push me to do another deck guide for nilfgaard uh in this uh this final week of the season so hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any tips to improve this deck let me know in the comment section down below don't hesitate to talk about that because i really appreciate your input so uh Especially because that's what we're here for after all, <laughs> trying to help each other out. Um, so thank you guys enormously for watching and for all the support on the previous videos and everything. Uh, well, every new subscriber as well. I really appreciate you guys joining because um, I've seen there's a lot of new people joining the channel. So welcome and uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.